Lake Mead water shortage, and that's what I'm talking about today. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela O'Hare, your favorite Las Vegas realtor. And I just really, really wanted to go over what is going on with the water shortage at Lake Mead. And this is very, very, very serious, okay? Um, I had a couple clients show me some articles and then I've been reading things in the newspaper. So I kind of started like thinking, oh my God, this is like super serious. I mean, really, Lake Mead, is bad. So in this video, I just really wanted to go over what is actually going on with the water shortage at Lake Mead and uh, what you can do as a resident here of Southern Nevada to do your part to conserve water. Lake Mead has declined to the lowest level since the reservoir was filled in the um, early 1930s when the Hoover Dam was being constructed. And making a new milestone for the water start, Colorado River is a downward spiral that shows no sign of letting up. The record comes as Lake Mead is nearing its first federally declared water shortage as a result of a two decade drought that has strained the Colorado River, which serves 40 million people in seven states, including Mexico. Why does Mexico get our water? Uh, don't they have the Gulf or something? <laughs> just kidding. Um, the lake's rapid decline has been outpacing projections from just a few months ago. Its surface reached a new low last week when it dipped past an elevation of 1,071 feet, a record set in 2016. But unlike that year, when inflows helped push the lake levels back up, the watershed is now so parched and depleted that Mead is projected to continue dropping next year and into 2023. Lake Mead, the largest reservoir in the country, now stands at 36% capacity. The lake is the source of about 90% of Southern Nevada's water. Yeah, this is serious, guys. Seriously. In the past month, Lake Mead has fallen below the official threshold of shortage, which the federal government is expected to declare in August. That will trigger major cuts in water allotments to Arizona, Nevada, and Mexico next year. And even bigger water reductions could be forced upon the Southwest if the reservoir continues to drop, which government estimates shows very likely. Such a declaration will slash Nevada's allocation of 300,000 square feet of Colorado River water by 13,000. One acre foot of water is about two homes in the Las Vegas Valley over 16 months. Um, a cut from a shortage decoration would be in addition to 8,000 acre foot contribution Nevada agreed to in 2019 if the lake level were to drop 1,090 feet. And it already has. But officials of the Water Authority have continued to urge the public to keep up with the conservation efforts, such as adhering to the seasonal watering schedule and using a rebate program to convert grass to desert landscaping. So if you are unaware of how the watering schedule works, basically here in Southern Nevada, you can water your grass every day except for Sundays. And then on the fall and spring, you can only water three days a week. And then in the winter, only one day a week. They've been doing this, as far as I can remember, at least 20 plus years, probably even longer. Um, I, yeah. And the rebate is an awesome program that Southern Nevada has, the Southern Nevada Water Authority has. I took advantage of it when I first bought my home two years ago, the front yard and backyard both had grass. And my first water bill, this was during the spring, when I was only watering three days a week, was $90. And I have two teenage kids. So at that time I was like, you know what, if I waited to summer, my water bill is gonna be double that. So to conserve water, I went to SNWA, Southern Nevada Water Authority, to get a rebate and get approved. And they were giving $3 per square foot. 
So I roughly got a little over $6,000 to convert my front and backyard to desert landscaping. Now, if you do live in an HOA, you do have to think about, you have to get an approval from your HOA first before you even do that. So what I would do is get your landscaper, get your plans, drawings, have SNWA come out, have them give you an estimate of how much per square foot they would give you, then go through the approval through your HOA if you can do that because they require a certain amount of plants. And then, by then, hopefully the water authority will be approved and your HOA will be approved for you to convert your grass. My water bill now is about $30 a month and I have two teenagers, well, 18 and 19 year old kids living at home, so it's still not that bad. Um, and I'm really happy with the conversion. Now, if you do convert, you will have what's called an easement on your home. So what an easement is, and you would have to disclose this if you sold your home, basically my backyard is all rock and desert landscaping. So if I were to sell my home, I would have to disclose that I have a water easement on it, meaning that I cannot put a pool in my backyard or add grass. So it's very important um, to disclose this when you're selling your home that oftentimes people who buy bigger houses with bigger yards want to eventually put a pool in their backyard. Unfortunately, my yard, they cannot. However, I think there's a way around it where you have to pay off that easement to convert it. Just something for you guys to know when it comes to getting these rebates and converting it to desert landscaping. Um, I don't know if they're still doing the, yeah, see, they're still doing $3, $3 per square foot of grass removed to the first 10,000 square foot per site and then any $1.50 for an additional over 10,000 square feet. Um, and then they also will be doing it for HOAs and businesses. Now, a while ago, or last week or so, Governor Sisolak signed a legislation that will require a third of the Southern Nevada's grass to be removed by the end of 2026, which to me seems a little too long. I mean, it should be by the end of 2023 or 2022. Um, the Water Authority estimates that the measure will save about 10% of the area's allocation of water from the river, which is about 30,000 acre square feet. So what he's going to do when he passes is so businesses that to have um, grass in front, this median sidewalks, anywhere that has grass will be required to convert it to desert landscape. The only places that will not be required to convert it to desert landscaping is golf courses and parks, which to me, I think, you know, is silly. I think golf courses, I know, you know, there's avid golfers here in Valley and having grass on the golf courses makes it beautiful. However, come on, we live in the desert. Keep the golf course aspect grass, but the terrain and the other aspects, let's make it desert landscaping. Parks, maybe we don't need so much grass, maybe make it into turf. Just food for thought on that. We are in the desert and we're going through a water shortage. And the only reason we're going through this is, if you, you know, you have to blame it on the um, global warming. You know, the Colorado River, Colorado is not getting as much snow as it used to in years past. So that means the snow is not melting to the Colorado River, which feeds the Hoover Dam and Lake Mead. So it's sad. I don't know what's going to happen in August. I don't know how we can get water and it's just something to think about when you are wanting to relocate here in general or if you're living here how you can do your part in conserving water and the number one thing is if you already have grass in your yard you need to put desert landscaping and follow the guidelines and I think you know when they did this 20 or so years ago, the watering guidelines, the watering schedule. I mean, it was smart, but maybe they should have been more stringent on it, you know, especially with everyone, thousands of people wanting to relocate to Las Vegas and all the new construction coming on. I mean, that is a lot of water. And who knows what next year is going to bring when they have to deplete the amount of water that they're going to allocate here. Anyway, this is serious and it's something that everyone in the Valley needs to think about and do their part. Um, I just wanted to bring this up because I think, you know, kind of like the COVID when it happened, we didn't know what to do and, and we weren't taking things seriously. And I think we need to really take this seriously. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my video about the water shortage here at Lake Mead. 
you know, when I was a kid, that thing was filled. There was no white line. Now it, the line is like huge. I'll, I'll maybe you can show a picture of it. But anyways, if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment down below, share with a friend, and smash that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.